Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with a small group of people. Usually we just have one guest on the show, and I think in the past we've had more than that from time to time. We've had small groups here and there, but we've got Anna Jane Edmonds, Carl Janice, and Zach Ramlin here with us today from Blackout Media to talk about, well, once again, a whole lot of things. We talked about an event, actually, that's just passed us by called Digital Prism, uh, held at the end of uh, June, just before Canada Day, and bringing together film, virtual reality, and music. This is a small group of people who want to turn the world upside down through storytelling, through narrative, through film, and, and, and bringing these different mediums together in new and engaging and fun ways. Truckload of passion here. No kidding. You're going to want to check them out online. Blackout Media is the company they're with, and the, the, uh, the, the name of the event uh, was Digital Prism. Check that out online as well. And the tagline... So appropriate. Explore, experience, inspire. And we talked about storytelling. We talked about immersive narrative experiences and what exactly that is. We talked about Hollywood and an industry that moves a whole lot of money, but I don't know, maybe not a whole lot of art. Uh, we talked about uh, Transformers as well and, and how it had a pretty poor opening weekend here in the West. We talked about, uh, you know, the constraints and how we limit ourselves when it comes to to breaking out in this whole new world, uh, in this whole new digital world. We talked about globalization and, and about how film actually really can uh, make a difference. So uh, buckle up and uh, listen in. I think you're going to really enjoy the interview. Check them out online. Anna Jane Edmonds, Carl Janice, Zach Ramlin from Blackout Media. Here we go. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by three very special guests today. Typically, we only have one special guest, so this is like extra special. This is an extra special event. We've got Anna Jane Edmonds, we've got Carl Janice, and we've got Zach Ramlin here with us today on the phone, sitting around a boardroom, talking into an iPhone. Thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you. So we're let's let's talk a little bit about what brought us together. I mean, you know, it, everything comes back to our publicists, right? So that's what that's what really got us in the room together here digitally. But it's about an event that you guys are uh, uh, hosting, working on, uh, coming up on June 29th, uh, called Digital Prism. You guys are filmmakers, you're producers, you're cinematographers, you're storytellers. But uh, tell us a little bit about the event, maybe a little bit about yourselves, and then we'll uh, you know we'll we'll keep it going from there. For sure. So Digital Prism is a digital storytellers event that was inspired after a series of really kind of down the dump conversations the three of us were having about what what we were doing in like April and that's April's the end of the granting season and you spend months doing thousand page, you know, applications to, you know, potentially not get the money you're applying for. And it really was starting to take away from the reason why we got into film to start with, which is individually each of us approach filmmaking and storytelling for different reasons. And collectively, we're very proud of the vision that we're able to create as a team. And so when we started brainstorming what Digital Prism would be about, we started breaking down what the storytelling process was for us and why we wanted to become storytellers in the first place. Yeah, so... Like to us, Digital Prism, it, we hope it will fill the gap uh, sort of left between the standard fair in Canada, which is film festivals, which are awesome, uh, and networking events, which are also great. And they're both super, super necessary to celebrate the medium we, we exist in. Um, but we all sort of felt, and, and we kind of posed the question to our community, and, and the general consensus was those events usually come with their own individual energies uh, that exist at them. And we want to put on an event that celebrated the core foundation of storytelling in, in general. Right. We want to ensure that everyone at Digital Prism 
could ask any question openly about any element within a story that they saw told and could even see items like the script or the storyboard or even prompts and conscience from the stories that they just watched. And for, for me, like I'm, I'm like all three of us, we're all very creative, but when it comes to going on a film set, it's usually like you have to go by the storyboard or script and it's really hard to go outside those lines. And for this event, what we want to do is build the set, build that creative atmosphere and to be able to feel like you can do anything and be inspired with anything within that space and really get people excited about telling their own stories and really showcase the things that are available to you locally. That's one of the biggest things we really want to champion Canadian filmmakers, Canadian storytellers, and especially ones from Toronto, because I know, you know, as a, an emerging filmmaker or if you've been one for a while, one of the hardest things is to know who's around you because as filmmakers and storytellers, we we tend to kind of go into our own little bubbles and, and not reach out as much as we, we, we should. And with this kind of event, we want to kind of open that doorway and show everybody that um, there are other people outside of filmmakers, there's musicians, there's virtual reality people, and really kind of, you know, start breeding people with that. It sounds, it sounds to me almost like the event is itself an art installation. Is that a fair assessment? So we, we very much want our guests to feel like they're walking into a story that they can take anything away from it and hopefully be inspired to create more stories um, from what they see. I mean, the, the core of the event is collaboration and inclusion. You know, we are super lucky to live in a country that's very supportive of filmmakers and storytellers, and we, we want to continue to encourage us at Blackout Media, as well as our friends and colleagues across Toronto and in Vancouver, to continue to collaborate together because that is what's going to maintain us as a really creative and successful country, and also hopefully allow us to grow larger than we are. And it's and it's funny and it's funny that you bring up the the event itself as an installation because one of the things that we've kind of noticed is that film and storytelling in general has usually just been expressed in two dimensions. So it's been based off of a screen and we want right. it. But we want to make this as extremely immersive so that there are three dimensions to this experience that you can either, it's tangible, you can feel it, you can see it, you can smell it. Like there's all senses we really want to encapsulate part of the event. So, so that, I mean, that's a great launching point. So uh, lots, lots to talk about. I mean, the subtitle or the sub sort of heading for your, your event is film, virtual reality, and music. And I'm, I would imagine you're, you're not only making statements about these things, but you're really exploring it. It's a process of discovery, like you say, immersive, interactive, creative, all those things. Is this, do you, do you guys feel in a sense as if this, hmm, this event is almost a, a way of saying, hey, th there's something going on in the digital world. There's something going on in the filmmaking world and so on. We, we see something else happening. And this is our way of not only showcasing that, but also saying maybe there's another way forward. Maybe there's a different way forward. Does that make any sense? Um, I, I can kind of understand what you're trying to say, at least what I think you're trying to say there, where um, in the year 2017, our way of ingesting media in general is completely changing. Yes. Something that we actually advocate for, if I can jump off of that, at Blackout Media is sort of changing the mode in which we receive stories. And so we're actually we're actively trying to develop stories at any given time length, any given uh, medium that you can consume the story on, rather than stick to what would be traditional archetypes. I, I think that might be what you're trying to get at. I'm not sure of that. No, the, it it absolutely is. I mean, I I mean, it's, it's got to be. I mean, it's got to so be more uh, more about just the, the Facebook like. I mean, when I, I mean, I, I get involved with, uh, uh, over the years, I've been involved with a lot of organizations. I teach at Humber College, so, you know, interacting with the young students. You know, we spend a lot of time on social media. We spend a lot of time with the device in front of us. You know, how is that changing the way we see others? How is that changing the way, you know, we view story? Um, and, and, and I guess to use your word, how, how we immerse ourselves in it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an exciting time to be participating in the digital storytelling media in general. Like, I, I was just reading a, a few weeks ago, Facebook hired or poached, really, two entertainment executives to start their own TV channel. And I think just a few days ago, Apple did the same. Apple was hiring two entertainment executives to head up an entertainment department. And so we're really seeing this dramatic shift 
uh, in the way people consume stories and the way we have to tell them. What what are some of the things that are bubbling to the surface for you guys in the past few years, past few months, research, clients, boardroom meetings that you've been, actual projects, the proposals that, that you've been writing? Any anything anything bubbling to the surface that that's saying to you um, this is this is kind of where we're heading or, or is it just still too early to tell you know tell what how long's television been around uh, what is it sixty years I guess sixty five seventy years I don't know but but how, you know do do you know what I'm saying I I think I understand I mean one thing that all of us notice is that people still consume media. One major change is that the, the length of time someone will sit and watch a television right. show. Right, right. right. And so there's a huge influx of web series and digital content. And, you know, the good thing about Canada is that they're, they're like the IPF sees it. Um, you know, IPF started as, as a television company and they've sat back now and gone, okay, well, digital and web is the next frontier of storytelling. And so that's definitely something we explore. But the other thing that's very comforting is that people still watch movies and are still looking for good movies and are very swiftly becoming frustrated with studio films and the cookie-cutter, big blockbuster, um, you know, action movies right. that you make a lot of money internationally but, but locally aren't actually doing that, that much business. So that's very comforting to a group of indie filmmakers who are constantly looking for engaging stories to tell because we, you know, we don't work with the millions of dollars that all the studios in Los Angeles do. We work with very little budgets, and we have to find other avenues of telling the story we want to tell without the money that, you know, a lot of other people have access to. There, there, must, there must be something very comforting about Transformers number 6 having its worst opening weekend ever for you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my, my heart breaks. <laughs> the producers on it. I, I hope that China comes through and, and gets them <laughs> their, at least some of their money back because that's very much where the market sits. I think for Transformers at the moment. Yes. But, um, yeah. Yeah. No. Transformers and the Mummy was a perfect example of, of two films that the ingredients were there for success, but the audience just wasn't. Do you think? Do you think we as the audience members are just kind of you know to your point? Um, do we do we do we think there's no creative ideas left at Holly, in Hollywood, uh, you know, in, in or at least in Western sort of commercial filmmaking? They're just it's rehashing. It's 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 the Marvel universe now, and maybe the DC universe finally, you know, going to really take off with Wonder Woman and so on. Um, or or are you guys more hopeful than that? Honestly, um, I'll be a bit honest as a candid here. I I truly believe what we've seen in the world of film and television up until now for the last few decades is an industry that has been run um, by financiers, as you know, in some ways it should be, because it is, a, is an industry that moves a lot of money. Mm. The problem with that is, in the year 2017, information and stories and content moves so quickly that if you read something in the news tomorrow, should you try and write a script around it, no one will even know what you're talking about at right. the time in theaters. And so I think that's where we see the financiers kind of going back and saying, okay, if something has succeeded at the box office or even before that, if it succeeded in a comic book or even novel format, then it is a safe investment. And so from an investment standpoint, it makes sense. But unfortunately, nobody wants to watch these movies anymore because they're tired of hearing the same story over and over. So I, I think that, in my opinion at least, is sort of what you see happening now with studios really back, reeling back and just churning out remakes and uh, sequels because financially, when you reflect back on the year 2016, doing what 2016 did again is the only safe bet. And I think that's what makes being in film now so exciting is because I, I do think that'll bubble over really quickly. I think it's already starting. To, like It's already starting. You have Amazon getting into film production. And obviously, Netflix has been producing their own content for years now. And they're really trying to champion independent storytellers with mm. unique stories that no one's seen before. Yeah, I think I think we, you know, because well, then all of a sudden stories are told for all the wrong reasons, really, right? To your point, if we just sort of mirror what we did in twenty sixteen, then we're not actually telling the stories that really need to matter, and the people that are telling them, they're not getting the platforms, 
or they're not getting access to the platforms because it's really it's 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 not something that's you know going to be bankable uh you know to, in 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 a in a you know in a in a more commercial way totally but you know what i and that's i i will take a very optimistic approach i'm very optimistic about the future because um if people aren't going to the theaters to watch transformers but are instead tuning in to watch a live video on facebook that just means they're willing to consume something new and not something remade so what would you say? Oh, well, t- tell me, tell me about who's behind Digital Prism. That's that's mostly you guys, right? And and tell me who you are. <laughs> you can talk about oh, yourself. Okay. You can talk about uh, yourselves individually, but tell tell me about Blackout as well. Uh, so Digital Prism is being put on by Blackout Media and the Eel Shell Collective, um, which I will type out for you. Eel Shell is actually a Norwegian-based word, and uh, the company itself gets kicked out of people uh, attempting to pronounce the name. Um, but yeah, we definitely partnered to put on this event. Ilshell runs a creative collective that uh, we operate an office out of uh, and are holding the event at. Um, but for Blackout, um, I don't know, AJ, do you want to take a bit of the history? The history of Blackout? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Carl, Zach, and Charlie Hamilton, who isn't sitting with us today, um, have been longtime friends. And I suppose this time last year found themselves creating content together frequently and decided that instead of doing it under their own names, they may as well band together. Um, at that time, I had actually just returned from Los Angeles. I worked down there for two years in development and production. And a couple of years before that, I actually worked with Zach and um, Carl on two features that I produced. And so when I came back, I reconnected and we did two films together in the summer and decided that the four of us made a wicked team and that I, I would join them. So that, that's the overall history of the four of us getting together. In, in terms of what grew us to each other, I, I believe each of us kind of present different qualities of filmmaking. Zach is a director editor. Carl is a producer cinematographer. Charlie is a writer director and I come from development and production and in the producing end. And so between the four of us, we have almost an entire film crew. Right. So, <laughs> At some point, and, that is all yep. film crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what really drew us together was the overall goal of what each of us wants to get out of the films we make. Whenever we go into something or are presented or are writing a script, the first thing we ask is, you know, how do you want to make an audience feel with this movie? Mm. And you know, what kind of questions do you want them to ask? What what kind of engagement are you trying to get out of the people that are watching it? You know, I, I think film takes on a lot of different incredible facets. It can be purely for entertainment. Um, it can be to educate. It can be to give people the opportunity to explore new realms and new places. It gives people the chance to speak languages they never did before. And so between the four of us, we're constantly creating, looking for material that makes us stop and really either question like what the story is and why this should be told right now. And, you know, like escapism. One of my favorite movies is Despicable Me. Right. Not because, not because it's any kind of like cinematic genius, but because, I mean, those silly little yellow minions are so ridiculous that they just bring me a lot of joy. Like I, that's why I watch it over and over again. Um, so that's that's really why the four of us got together is because we we all have a vision that through the stories we want to tell and the films that we curate within our company, we really want to be letting an audience go on a journey. We're not bound by genre. We're not bound by specific periods in time. We are always looking for a kind of story that we think will tell tell the best world and give the audience the best ride they can go on. So, Honestly, so, the, uh, the overall like, grand, amazing vision that I think we all hold, it comes from the fact that now that we're sort of en- entering the late 2010s and into the 2020s, the world is officially globalized. We trade in almost all countries on the planet. We share culture and media. We can connect with one another at light speed. Um, but communication still acts as a huge barrier. Mm. And filmmaking is such a fascinating way 
to break down those barriers of communication because though you may have to read subtitles um, or try and have something translated that's on screen, the actual message that a film carries through light and sound can be translated into any language mm. because it is a feeling and it is a story. And so for us, filmmaking is a way to tell something to everybody on the planet and ask questions to so everybody on the planet. Is this, is this Carl? Yes, it is. Hi. Hey, Carl. <laughs> Sorry. We don't, we don't got the visual. I mean, come on. What kind of storytellers are you guys, right? <laughs> uh, Carl, I love what you're saying. Are you ta- are you talking about empathy there a little bit? Are you talking about you know we we still don't communicate very well with others? We got this global world. We're all connected, but we're not. It's not really resonating. Is that is that so? Is it is it that empathetic side uh, to story the stories that we tell? Um, from a personal standpoint, I would say yes. I think that um, films have the power to change the way people feel about the world around them and the people around them and have an effect that we can't honestly quite see in the moment. You may yeah. never know the effect of film has on you in the theater, but years later, it could leave a message that comes back and teaches you something about your life or about what you have in store for your future. And I think that is something that even we don't have the power necessarily to wield, but is something important to recognize when making films. So I'm going to read a quote right off your website. At, quote, at Blackout Media, we aim to push the boundaries of conventional cinema to tell the most compelling story possible. Uh, Zach, can you unpack that for me? Whoa, wait, wait, what's, what's the quote again? <laughs> it's a doozy. It's a beautiful quote. I love it. At Blackout Media, we aim to push the boundaries of conventional cinema to tell the most compelling story possible. I guess the question is, what does it mean to push the boundaries of con- conventional cinema? Um, I mean, for us, I mean, we see that there, there are a lot of, a lot of boundaries that people kind of create. And I think, um, one of the things that we see, or at least that I see within my circle of friends or within a circle of filmmakers is that you limit yourself due to budgetary reasons or whatever. And with Blackout, we really don't want to make any limits. We want your imagination to kind of run wild and see what ideas we can create. And that's kind of the most fun thing about our, our group is that the four of us will get together and come up with some of the craziest and best ideas that I've ever heard because we don't limit ourselves to any constraints. And I think the best stories that are created and my favorite stories that I ever see are the ones that were designed without limitation or boundaries. Do you think we are just sort of on the edge of what we're going to start seeing on YouTube, uh, what we're going to start seeing on on Facebook? I mean, obviously Netflix changed the way uh, studios look at filmmaking, investors look at filmmaking, and and even audiences. I mean, the whole idea of binge watching, right? Being able to watch totally. story from beginning to end. I mean, how crazy is that? What a who would have thought that thirty or forty years ago that was a possibility? So. So we, I mean, yeah, you're, you tell, tell me a little bit more about that, 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 I don't know, that prophetic voice uh, of YouTube. For sure, for sure. I mean, like, that, that, that's definitely one of the bigger boundaries that used to exist, right, that you were kind of working off of uh, a network or the standards of what a network would have. And now there's these beautiful online platforms in which you can do whatever the hell you want. And you can tell the stories you want to do. And there are people like Netflix that want to try and push the boundaries. You have shows like Stranger Things that got like turned down by dozens of networks and then immediately went on Netflix and is now one of the most successful shows of 2016. And it takes bold networks and, and even just open platforms like YouTube or Facebook that are willing to kind of push the boundaries in those areas. And as a storyteller, I think we're just at the very beginning and we're going to start seeing stories that, you know, went into someone's closet or went, you know, kind of swept under the rug. No one kind of focused on it. They are now going to start emerging because they have these areas in which they can voice their stories. And I'm super excited, not only for what our team is going to do, but the stories that we're going to see. And that's kind of what we want to do with our event is essentially showcase that, showcase those stories that, you know, some of the stories and some of the films didn't get a chance to screen at certain festivals because it didn't fit certain programming. Right. We want to showcase that because it's not that they're bad stories. It just doesn't fit uh, a certain platform. And for us, all stories fit, fit somewhere and we want to showcase that. So, so is, 
it, it, are you guys as hopeful as I am? I mean, where I'm, where I'm going, and it, and it sounds like you are, which I think is remarkable. And you can challenge me on that if you're not hopeful. And if it's just a dark, dystopic, cynical universe that lay, is laying out in front of us, you can go, go, go right ahead and go down that path. But when I hear, you know, uh, uh, this idea, Carl, that that we're all globally connected now, the possibilities, the opportunities are just endless the the films that we're going to start seeing coming out coming out of the most remote places around the global south i I think are going to knock our socks off aren't they um i mean from from my perspective um you know kind of going back on to the the online world for a second that's kind of where uh i focus a lot of my attention is the content that kind of comes out online and you're now starting to develop stories that are driven by audiences that aren't driven by studios. And so when it comes to that, you have an audience from another country starting to, you know, want these certain stories. Or if you look online, now audiences are able to control whether they like something or not through a thumbs up. And that can guide where things are going over a dollar sign. So you now have um, actual interest guiding stories as opposed to money, which is very exciting. So what is what's what's next for you guys? Is this so the event? Is this just a one-off, or is this is this kind of an annual thing you guys want to do, or what what what's the plan? So right now, uh, the event is just our way of celebrating storytelling in Canada. Um, to give you a perspective on what Blackout is up to, uh, we just finished our slate of short films last year, six short films to act as proof, as proof of concepts to develop into larger long format series and TV uh, series and features. Nice. Um, so right now we are actively in the development and packaging stage for those projects. And Digital Prism was our way of sort of like igniting a flame in Toronto to celebrate storytelling amongst our peers and those who love to still tell stories as well. So, so probably probably should wrap it up in a cu- couple of minutes, but I, I I think I could talk to you guys all night. Um, what, um, so, can I think I'm pretty sure you already said this, uh, Carl. I think it was you, Carl, I, and you've all kind of said it in your own ways, and 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 just the tagline of explore, experience, inspire for digital prism is marvelous. But can can you change the world with film? A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yes, uh, totally. We're like one of one of my biggest goals is to to create. Essentially, what what our biggest thing is is to create an audience for our, for our films and start to to pivot interest and to to guide everybody through through the stories that we tell and, and change the world through that way. I I think we are the luckiest people in the world mm. to get to helm story and talk to people globally and maybe someday a universal conversation as people start going to Mars. And I, I think actually that narrative storytelling is one of the most effective ways to affect change and to get people having conversations they otherwise wouldn't have and, and doing it in a way that entertains them while also gives them a talking point and perhaps educate them on something they didn't know about before. I just, I think, I think about all the possible doors that one can open, you know, by stepping onto the internet, by, by, by watching a film that, that, that I'm watching a film about the Gambia uh, right now, a doc that I, I, I know a little bit about that part of Africa, but very little. And I'm being introduced to these wonderful young men and women that are doing really incredible things with very little money and just going, this is I, I, this is unbelievable. This is a world that I would never have had access to had I chosen not to say yes, right? And, and that's a very interesting. It's a very interesting point that you put up. Is that the accessibility of filmmaking has not only become a lot more tangible with online platforms, but obviously, obviously with technology as well. That yes. people can tell stories through their cell phones, and that's absolutely something. yeah. And, and I think it goes hand in hand with the online platform. And, you know, half the stories that I watch every day are not shot on big, expensive cameras. I watch a lot of documentary content that's on cell phones. And I feel that you get more engaging content through tangible technology as opposed to the things that are unaccessible due to financial reasons. There was, um, there was a film a couple of years ago and back, back maybe 2014 uh, at, at, at TIFF called Silvered Water. 
uh, and I think the subtitle was Syria Self-Portrait, and it was directed by uh, a, a guy out of Paris who had been exiled from Syria, who a woman had contacted him through Facebook. She shot most of the film on her handheld. Then they took a bunch of footage from Facebook, from YouTube, and they, they pieced it all together in the, into this incredible film. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I, I'm no real film critic, but I, I think it's groundbreaking in the way they approached it. But more importantly, in how they did it, you know, <laughs> Facebook, you know, the, the, one guy's in France, she's on the ground in Aleppo filming, and, and, and they actually pieced together this film that, that, I mean, it brought tears to my eyes. And, and, you know, to, for us, that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest things is that film to a lot of people is an intangible, intangible thing. And we, we create these boundaries for no reason. Like, oh, I need, I need an elector. I need a red or whatever. But it's like to tell an engaging story, all you need is a camera and a voice. Mm -hmm. And whether that's on your cell phone or on the most expensive camera you can get, as long as you have a good story, there's, there's an audience willing to listen. Well, I think that's a great uh, uh, a line sorted out. All, all you need is a camera and a voice. I think that's a, a beautiful uh, tagline for something. Uh, thank, thanks so much for uh, taking the time today to talk not only about your event, but about what you guys do and about your vision. Actually, frankly, your vision for storytelling and your vision for the future. I re really appreciate it. I, I, I love your energy and your passion. It sounds like you're really committed to taking all of this to the next level. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much.